If you or someone you care for have medical problems, hearing loss, blindness, or other challenges, the first step to take in preparing for hurricane season is to get a good support system. Who can you count on for help in an emergency? We can all use help. And for persons with special needs, teaming up with a hurricane helper is a great way to be prepared. Who can you depend on when a hurricane is coming? Who understands what you need and will be able to help? And if you know someone with special needs, have you let them know they can count on you in an emergency? Once you've teamed up with a helper, talk about the different ways you can communicate. Now you have my new office number, right? Right. Because different emergencies can knock out different systems, so the more ways you have to stay in touch, the better. Do you have a standard phone connection that doesn't need electricity if the power goes out or cell phone lines are jammed? Will you and your hurricane helper be together during a storm? Visit about what you'll need to be safe and to stay informed. If your zip code must be evacuated or it's just not a good idea for you to stay at home, will your hurricane helper be able to get you to a safe place? If not, and you'll need transportation, dial 211 today to register for help. I kept hearing you need to have a plan, but I didn't know where to start. So I began by making a list of things I need every day, like medicines and my walker. Preparing for hurricane season doesn't have to be overwhelming if you take it step by step. For the next two days, make a list of all the things you do and use. Then, with your hurricane helper, go over the list to mark things you can't be without. And this is my list. If you have a child with special needs, keep a journal of everything that's used to care for them. If you have a pet or service animal, what does it need each day? Now that you have your list, what extras would you need to have to stay in your home for at least a week or more without electricity or any way to get supplies, including medications, batteries for hearing aids, and anything you might need for the equipment you depend on? Then, buy a few extras each time you shop so that the cost of being prepared isn't as difficult. When you see your physician, ask about getting extra medications to keep with your hurricane supplies and written prescriptions that can be kept with other important papers. If you must evacuate your home, is the equipment that you use portable or will you need something else to travel with? Helping to make a plan by starting with a list of everyday needs and storing extras a little at a time is a great example of how hurricane helpers can really make a difference. Staying safe is what preparing for hurricanes and other emergencies is all about. How safe is your home? And what should you do to be ready? Every home should have basic safety equipment like fire extinguishers and smoke detectors. Do you keep them working with fresh batteries and are you able to operate them on your own? If not, helping to make your home safe is another important job for hurricane helpers. Remember the list you made of things you depend on every day? Be sure you have the supplies you will need to be self-sufficient at home for several days without running water or electricity. If you're relying on agencies that help you now to continue helping during a hurricane, don't assume anything. Talk directly with your support systems to be sure that any supplies or assistance that you're counting on will be there when you need it. And if you depend on electricity for life support equipment, be sure that both your power company and local fire department have been notified. Still, even though you may be on a power priority list, it's important to have backup power options like batteries and generators for vital equipment. Who will be with you during a hurricane? Practice with your hurricane helper any assistance they will need to provide, including medications you take and how to operate any equipment that you use. Sometimes staying home isn't an option. If an evacuation is necessary or being home without electricity or running water for several days will be dangerous for you, then have a plan ready for when it's time to move to a safer location. Just like there are different strengths of hurricanes, there are different levels of risk for areas in their path. The closer you live to the coastline, the more likely you are to be evacuated. But danger can come in many forms, so it's important to stay aware of emergency instructions no matter where you live. Don't wait until the last minute to make a move. If you have special needs, it's much better to give yourself plenty of travel time to get to safety. Know what you'll need from your list to be safely away from home for at least two weeks. Seal medications, hearing aid batteries, and any other supplies that shouldn't get wet into plastic bags. Important documents like family phone numbers, copies of written prescriptions, insurance and benefit cards, 
Emergency health information such as allergies and physician contact information should also be stored in watertight plastic and kept where you can get to them quickly. Keep a pen and paper handy if you have difficulty communicating or remembering instructions. And tags with your name, address, and phone number should be put on any equipment that you'll be taking with you. When it's time to leave, will you travel with your hurricane helper? If he or she can't get to you, do you have a backup helper for getting to a safe place? If not, and you'll need transportation in an evacuation, dial 211 today to register for help. Most of all, have a support system you can count on now for when you need it. Because we're better together. 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 Against the weather.